If you enjoy this video, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you would like to support the channel on Patreon or PayPal, the links are listed below. With popular TV shows, there have also been a number of successful spin-off shows that have had even more success than its predecessors. There have also been a number of unsuccessful spin-offs and failed pilot episodes that were going to be turned into a spin-off series, but would never be picked up for a season. One such episode was the Star Trek original series episode, Assignment Earth, that was originally going to be a backdoor pilot that would spin off into a new series. Sadly, this proposed series would never see the light of day. In 1965, Gene Roddenberry had plans to create a new original pilot for a proposed series. This planned series story outline was written around the same time he was working on his other pilot, The Cage, which would evolve into Star Trek. On the 20th of April 1965, Gene Roddenberry would write the first draft for the proposed series. He would continue with a number of drafts and story revisions. And on the 14th of November, Gene would come up with an official title for the screenplay, Seven. Seven was originally about an alien named Gary Seven, whose goal was to defeat an alien race called the Amigans, who were a race of shape-changing aliens who send agents back in time to change Earth's history so they can defeat Earth in the future. This plot concept of benevolent aliens secretly helping earthlings was in fact later resurrected in the 1970s Roddenberry movie The Questor Tapes. The original story outline for Seven would go through a number of drafts and revisions. No TV networks seemed interested in picking up Gene's proposed series pilot. Gene would rework the story elements and decide to turn the original story and premise and include it in an episode of Star Trek, titled Assignment Earth. The episode would act as a backdoor pilot for an Assignment Earth spin-off series. The script was rewritten and reworked to fit into the Star Trek format. Assignment Earth was written by Art Wallace, a prominent screenplay writer on a number of well-known television shows, including Combat and The Invaders. He would also write for another episode of Star Trek, titled Obsession, during the second season. Interesting to note that in one of the early drafts of the script, there was going to be a scene with a bridge crew of the Enterprise watching an episode of Bonanza on the view screen. There have been many undeveloped Star Trek projects, like the Assignment Earth series, including The God Thing, which was a script for an intended Star Trek film. This undeveloped script would be the template for a TV series titled Star Trek Phase 2 for the pilot episode titled In Thy Image, which would ultimately become Star Trek The Motion Picture. Other undeveloped Star Trek projects included Star Trek Planet of the Titans, Star Trek The First Adventure, and Star Trek The Beginning. The episode of Simon Earth was the 26th and final episode of the second season of Star Trek. In this episode, Kirk, Spock and the crew of the Enterprise travel back in time to Earth in 1968 for historical research. During this time, they encounter a humanoid named Gary Seven after intercepting his transporter beam. Gary Seven claims to be sent by an advanced race of beings from the 24th century to prevent nuclear war in the future by stopping the launch of an orbital missile. Seven's office is situated in New York City and his transporter is in his safe. He uses a better five computer which is hidden behind a bookcase and speaks with a female voice. His desk has a blue green cube on it and a typewriter that types whatever is spoken. Seven's companion is Isis, who appears to be an ordinary household cat and communicates with him through telepathy and understands his speech. She is also able to alter her shape and form and sometimes transforms into an attractive humanoid woman. In the episode, Gary Seven hires a new secretary 
Roberto Lincoln, who has trouble grasping everything that is going on around her. By the end of the episode, she becomes his second companion, next to Isis. Gary Seven uses a servo, which looks like a pen, and is a multifunctional device, which serves as a communicator. It is also a weapon, which has a kill and stun setting, which can make its target go into a hypnotic state. It is also an electronic manipulation device, which can deactivate a force field, and is also a mechanical manipulation device, which has the ability to unscrew screws, lock and unlock doors. The device is very similar to the Doctor's sonic screwdriver on the TV series Doctor Who. Gary Seven is actually one of the few humanoids that the Vulcan nerve pinch doesn't affect. The events of a Simon Earth take place in 1968. These Star Trek episodes, along with the Simon Earth, are the only episodes set in the 20th century, like the DS9 episode, Past Tense, Part 2, the original series episodes, The City on the Edge of Forever, and Tomorrow is Yesterday, the Enterprise episodes, Stormfront, Parts 1 and 2, Zero Hour, Carbon Creek, the DS9 episodes, Little Green Men, and Far Beyond the Stars, and the Star Trek Voyager episodes, 1159, and Future's End, Parts 1 and 2. A Simon Earth was directed by Mark Daniels, who had directed 36 episodes of I Love Lucy. He also directed episodes of Gunsmoke, Mission Impossible, and Hogan's Heroes. To science fiction fans, Daniels is best known for directing 15 episodes of Star Trek and writing the Star Trek animated series episode, One of Our Planets is Missing. Mark Daniels and director Joseph Paney have directed the most number of episodes of Star Trek, including episodes like The Man Trap, Space Seed, The Doomsday Machine, and Mirror Mirror. Daniels would receive many awards for his time on Star Trek and appeared in the episode The Changeling as Dr. Jackson Roy Kirk. He would also direct the episode. Robert Lansing was cast as Gary Seven. Lansing's first major appearance was playing the lead role in the 1959 sci-fi film 4D Man. He followed with a number of short-lived TV shows, mainly in the 60s, including 12 O'Clock High in 1964 and The Man That Never Was. Throughout the 1960s until the 1980s, he appeared in a number of TV shows, including The Twilight Zone, Bonanza, Gunsmoke, Ironside, The Mod Squad, Murder She Wrote, and Simon and Simon. He also starred in the short-lived science fiction TV series, Auto Man. Lansing had worked with Gene Roddenberry before on the pilot episode for the series The Long Hunt of April Savage, produced by Gene. Interesting to note that Robert Lansing was the only original series guest star on Star Trek whose credit appears after the opening credits, complete with character name instead of during the end credits. The fact that the episode was to serve as the pilot for a proposed spin-off series explains the credits. Terry Gar also co-stars. Gar, of course, was mostly known for her film work on movies including Mel Brooks' comedy classic Young Frankenstein in 1974 and in Steven Spielberg's science fiction epic Close Encounters of the Third Kind in 1977. She also received an Oscar nomination for a role in Tootsie in 1983. In A Simon Earth, Terry Garr played Roberta Lincoln, the ditzy secretary of Gary Seven. Garr does not look back on the experience of shooting the Star Trek episode with fond memories. Her unpleasant experience on the set shaped her opinion of the franchise with Terry Gar walking off the set, mainly due to Gene Roddenberry wanting her skirt to be shorter than it already was. In an interview in 1990, she said she was glad the backdoor pilot didn't go to a series, and made it very clear 
that she did not want to be associated with Star Trek in the future. Notable Star Trek actor William Blackburn, who played many bit parts on the original series, makes an appearance as a rocket control room technician. He can also be seen walking in front of Gary Seven, just after he materialises at McKinley Rocket Base. Blackburn appeared in many episodes of the original series, uncredited, for three seasons. Usually he played Starfleet officers, like Helmsman Hadley. He appeared in a total of 61 episodes in the series. Blackburn was originally recruited as D. Forrest Kelly's stand-in and was also the subject of a number of makeup tests. And he provided voiceovers on the series with many other off-screen voices in the episode of Simon Earth. There were many uncredited co-stars, including James Dewan, who provided the voice of the mission control announcer. Barbara Babcock was the voice of Gary Seven's Better Five computer and Isis, the feline companion of Sevens. Assignment Earth was, was the cat. And, and they didn't want to use a real cat's voice because there was such a range of emotions that this cat went through. It was almost human. The script called for Isis the cat to make various cat sounds on cue. And then I also did the computer in that, I think. The woman who was the, compu uh, the computer voice. Incomplete. Babcock made a number of appearances in a handful of Star Trek episodes as Mia 3 in the episode A Taste of Armageddon and Felania in Plato's Stepchildren. She also was the voice of Trelane's mother in The Squire of Gophus and Zotarians in the lights of Zeta in a Simon Earth. A cat named Sambo and two unknown cats were used as Isis. Originally, the female human form of the cat Isis was rumoured to be portrayed by actress Victoria Vetri, but she would later confirm this rumour to be false. In fact, the uncredited human form of Isis was portrayed by actress and dancer April Tatro. Filming of a Simon Earth started on the 2nd of January in 1968 until the 10th of January of 1968. All of the interior shots of engineering, sick bay, bridge, transporter room were filmed on Desilu Stage 9, with Paramount Stage 5 being used as Gary Seven's apartment with additional scenes shot on the exterior Paramount Windsor Street backlot for the New York Street scenes. Interesting to note that the New York City Street was used for the TV sitcom I Love Lucy. The Paramount office buildings were used for the exterior shots for the McKinley rocket base scenes. Original NASA stock footage was used and the footage shown of the rocket launching is of Apollo 4. The Better 5 computer prop was used as the M5 Multitronic unit in the episode The Ultimate Computer. The computer was reused yet again for the episodes All Our Yesterdays. With the Simon Earth, Roddenberry was heavily involved in every facet of the production, from sets, props, casting of actors, and even costume. He also rewrote Art Wallace's script. A Simon Earth is also the only episode where the transporter is used to intercept and redirect another transporter beam. A Simon Earth is one of the only episodes of Star Trek where time travel is treated as just routine. This was before the Temporal Prime Directive was proposed and implemented by Starfleet. So time travel is not misused. Assignment Earth was aired on the 29th of March 1968, just six days before Martin Luther King was assassinated on the 4th of April 1968. At the end of the episode, it sets it up for a spin-off series when Spock tells Gary Seven and Roberta Lincoln after checking the Federation records that he finds that the new team has interesting experiences in store for them. 
Unfortunately, the episode did not become a series, but the character of Gary Seven would live on in comic books and novels, appearing in a number of non-canon Star Trek works following the adventures of Gary Seven and Roberta Lincoln. There was even a short story titled Seven and Seven featured in Star Trek Strange New Worlds Volume 6 in 2003 where we see Gary Seven teaming up with Seven of Nine. Gary Seven also appeared in several issues of the DC Star Trek comic books in the 1990s. In Season 2 of Picard in the episode titled Fly Me to the Moon, reference is made of Gary Seven, as hinted in the previous episode. Talon is part of the same organization of supervisors that Gary Seven was a part of. Picard explains that Kirk's Enterprise crossed paths with a human called Gary Seven. Talon vaguely nods to this reference, which implies that she either knows of Gary Seven or was aware of that incident happening. In the episode, Talon mentions that she doesn't like time travelers, which echoes back to the episode Assignment Earth, where Gary Seven shows his disapproval of Kirk and Spock traveling back in time to 1968. In that episode, Gary wasn't assigned to watch over one person like Talon, but he was assigned to prevent anyone to interfere with a timeline. It would have been nice to see what would have happened if they continued a Simon Earth as a fully-fledged spin-off series. Maybe there is a possibility for it to happen with the recent resurgence of new Star Trek shows like Star Trek Strange New Worlds and Discovery. Who knows? A Simon Earth isn't necessarily one of the best episodes of the original series, but it's an entertaining episode nonetheless, full of wonderful classic Star Trek moments. And I liked the character of Gary Seven. I truly love the Star Trek franchise. My name's Jonathan. Thanks for watching.